Okay, all right. Uh, so our second speaker for today is Professor Andrew Trapp from uh, Industrial and Operations uh, Engineering at the Western Polytechnic Institute in Massachusetts. Um, he holds a PhD from the University of uh, Pittsburgh uh, and uh, uh, he is uh, known for his uh, research at the intersection of operations research, uh, analytics, and uh, humanitarian uh, systems, uh, tackling problems such as uh, refugee uh, resettlement and uh, countering human trafficking, which is a, a very uh, a kind of high social uh, impact um, uh, application. Uh, and his research has been uh, funded, among others, by the National Science Foundation. Uh, and his work has appeared in, uh, in uh, venues such as uh, Operations Research, uh, Informs Journal on Computing, uh, uh, and EJOR, uh, among others. And uh, today he's going to tell us about um, a matching problem which, which seems to arise repeatedly in these uh, applications uh, and how to tackle it best. So please take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm Andy Trapp. Uh, nice to see you. Um, I'm going to be speaking today about a comparative study of stability representations for solving many-to-one matching problems with ties and incomplete lists uh, via integer optimization. Um, this is with my PhD student, Pishaya, who is, uh, I believe, on the call, as well as my colleague, Hoda, at James Madison. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, as a practical motivation, just this is actually a practical po uh, problem that popped up at WPI at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Where, I, where I'm appointed. Um, it's, a, it's a problem of matching students to project centers throughout uh, actually the world. Um, this is actually a hallmark of WPI is um, our, our, our WPI plan. As we say, um, it's basically a, a study abroad program. So sophomore students study abroad for seven weeks, uh, sorry, junior students, but we place sophomore students uh, into this program. So in their sophomore year, they get placed and then in their junior year, they go abroad. Um, so I was just approached a few years ago and asked about, you know, um, could I help out with this process? It was exceedingly manual and tedious of matching. They have long queues of lines waiting for people to interview their, their top choice and so on and so forth. Um, so we, in, since 2017, we, we semi-automated this process with using optimization and decision support. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a practical motivation. On the technical side, um, just briefly, I'll touch base on matching mechanisms with a caveat that I am no expert in matching theory. I'm, I'm a discrete optimizer. Um, so I'm definitely approaching this from an optimization lens. Um, but just some, some brief points here on, on Pareto efficiency. Um, Pareto efficiency is, is in, and you may know these already, uh, where no other match is, exists where there's an entity that's better off without making at least one other entity worse off. Strategy proofness is about the mechanism itself, about um, th there's no incentive for misreporting preferences. So the best, the best strategy is to report truthful pref preferences on uh, kind of the student side, on the project center side. Um, stability, um, that's, we're gonna focus on stability here. You probably caught it in the title. Um, no blocking pairs are associated with justified envy or waste. And justified envy is, is where entities prefer one another over the actual, their actual assignment. That's probably what you've, you may be familiar with, with um, stable matching, excuse me, stable marriage. Um, and uh, waste is a, a slightly different concept that comes up uh, in many to one matching, where students prefer a project center that also prefers a student over its vacant seat. So if a project center has a vacant seat and a student prefers to have that, but the student is matched somewhere else, that would be waste. It could be more efficient for a student to be matched to that um, project center that has that vacancy. Um, so it turns out no mechanism can address all three simultaneously. Um, I'm going to pivot now a bit. So, so there's a lot of work, and you may be familiar with this, um, in the kind of computer science, economics and computer science literature. Uh, together, there's a lot of um, the algorithms that are out there, uh, deferred acceptance, top trading cycles. Um, I'm going to focus on the optimization side more. Um, so that's what this table is, is just reviewing some literature, um, kind of the most related literature to our work. Um, Van de Vate in 1989, this is a many, excuse me, a one-to-one, -one, um, looking at the stable marriage problem, uh, was the first, as far as we're aware, to uh, implement a constraint set to, to uh, enforce stability for one-to-one. -one. Um, and Roth et al. I think that was actually with Van de Vate, improved on that a bit. Um, and then there's uh, a number of others that are many to one. 
And I will, it, and ver, ver, these are all very good studies. Um, Bayou and Belinsky was the first to model uh, many to one stability constraints. Um, I'll cover those. And then we're gonna introduce a few others that we've derived and just walk through a computational study of you know, how they perform in a variety of settings. Um, so again, this is motivated by a problem at WPI. And as we got into it a little bit more, we understood some opportunities to uh, create different constraints. Um, yeah, so, so feel free if you have any questions to, to, to let me know as we go forward here. And we'll also have time, I guess, afterwards. Okay, so we call ours SPC matching as for student PC for Project Center. Uh, SPC matching, um, it's many to one. Students and project centers have preferences over one another. Uh, importantly, the preference lists can be incomplete, so they don't need to exhaustively, project center directors don't need to exhaustively rank all 1,000 students. And uh, likewise, from the student side, and there might be ties, there might be indifference, um, and that's okay. That's not always okay with uh, classical algorithms. There's adaptations that handle those, but um, in our case, ties are all right. And individual project centers, of course, they have limited capacity, um, but collectively, and this is important as well, there's sufficient capacity to place all the students, not unlike uh, the school choice problem, um, also medical residency. So um, we also look at a different, different aspect, um, cohorts. So constructing cohorts or, or teams at each project center. And this is not at the individual level for, for um, you know, cr creating a, multiple teams at a project center, uh, just the overall project center. So the entire group of students that are placed at, this, at, at the project center, might, we might care about their you know, gender, or we might care about um, the major that they have or the languages they can speak. So that comes up and we treat that as well. Um, okay, great. So, so let me just present a baseline formulation. We've got a set of students S, a set of project centers P. Um, the project center set also includes a virtual project center. Uh, we have a set of ranking levels and this gets to incomplete lists with ties. So students might have, um, you know, a, a, a certain number of levels where they are indifferent among project centers, right? Their top tier, you might say, of several project centers that they care the most about uh, would go into uh, you know, a single level, it's similarly on the project center side. And then we have uh, QSP is the preference of student S for project center P, and KSP is likewise a preference of project center or really the director, P for student S. Um, this is all in, in, our, in our manuscript as well. So I'm gonna skip over a few details in this talk about how we compute those values, but just those are values um, between zero and one. Um, okay, uh, each project center P has a capacity and we've got binary decision variables, XSP. Okay, so we've got this initial kind of just baseline formulation. We're maximizing the number of students placed plus some utility. Um, with, a, with this parameter in the objective in the second component, gamma. And gamma is chosen uh, lexicographically to be such that um, the best contribution from the second objective component is strictly less than the least contribution from the first objective component. So we would always choose to have one more match over the best gains in stability, uh, excuse me, utility. Um, the first constraint set 1B, just says assign every student somewhere. It could be a virtual project center, it could be there, even though we have sufficient capacity. The virtual, because we have incomplete lists, it could be the case that if a student lists just very few locations and there's much more desirable students to place, it might end up being unplaced. Um, we've got capacity constraints 1C. Uh, 1D just says, uh, you know, students who would prefer to be unmatched over going to some place that they don't wanna go, uh, should be you know turn off those binary variables, and likely uh, likewise uh, we've got variable domains. Okay, so so the first stability representation from the literature, actually the first one as I mentioned for for the one to one case was from Van de Vate. Uh, it was a great great paper. Um, we extend that, so I'll I'll, I'll revisit that in a few slides. Uh, but for the the first many to one that we're aware of is by you and Belinsky in two thousand, which basically does the following thing. Um, you can see that if X is 
So this is for, for every S for every P. And if S is matched to P, so all the way on the left-hand side, good, then we satisfy the constraint, right? So, so the constraints holds. Um, if X is, excuse me, if S is not matched to P, then one of two things needs to happen. S would need to be matched to a place it likes better. And let's see if I can kind of highlight that. If S likes J better than P, um, great. Then again, we're satisfied that that's no problem then. Um, or if that's not the case, then we force all of P's um, students that are placed there, P likes better than S. So again, we're ensuring um, stability in this way. Actually, so the, the first one, uh, uh, this, this part satisfies justifiable envy. The second part satisfies waste. And so, so that, that already exists out there. We call it BBT. It's actually a slight difference than, than Bayou and Belinsky. The only is, is that we allow for ties here, if you can see that um, equality. Okay, so we, the T is for ties, BBT. Um, and we introduce four new stability constraint sets um, to, to basically, el they eliminate blocking pairs of these two types, right? So one with respect to justified envy and one with respect to waste. And we, we also introduce a system of constraints, um, actually a system to, to handle waste. Okay, so I'll move forward here. The first one that we introduce is, is just pairwise, uh, stability represent representation PW. This eliminates blocking pairs associated with justified envy. Just like, so, so we're gonna introduce uh, four, again, four constraint sets or stability representations. They all eliminate justifiable envy. And the, the last one, we're gonna introduce a system that, that eliminates waste. Okay, so this one just looks as follows. If student S is matched to project center P, then we can't have a matching pair IJ existing. So it kind of forbids the kind that have blocking pairs S to J, J would be a place that uh, is better than P, or a blocking pair IP, where um, from P's perspective, I is um, worse than S. Okay, so, so it turns out that there's a lot of these constraints. It turns out there are um, order of S squared, uh, size of S, size of, multiplied by the um, size of P squared. Um, turns out there's a lot of these. And so we also, you know, as we thought about this, thought about aggregating. And so, so this first way, SPC1 aggregates uh, over PW to obtain a new constraint set that eliminates um, the type of SJ block blocking pairs. So that's S going to J, a place that it would, it would prefer to P. Uh, in the following way. Um, so you, you have the constraint on the, on the right-hand side. If, if, if X is, does not go to, to P, then it, S does not go to P, it's, it's vacuous. If S does go to P, uh, then we can't have um, these types of blocking pairs that forbids those. Okay, so, and then we could also aggregate in the other way. And we have, uh, this aggregation eliminates IP blocking pairs. Okay, so, so it looks very similar, um, but this is from the project center side. Okay. Um, we also extend v, uh, Van de Vates to the many to one case. Uh, this part eliminates blocking pairs associated with justifi justified envy in the following way. So if S is, if S is matched to any place J, uh, it, it likes lower than P, then we forbid um, P from being assigned a student less preferable than S. Okay, it's similar to Van de Vate, but in the many to one case. But with many to one, um, we also, th this concept of waste comes up. So we also introduced this, this constraint system, and this constraint system is gonna be coupled with all four of those new um, stability representations, eliminating justifiable ND. Okay, so this system prevents waste in the following way. Uh, it ensures project centers accept preferable students over vacant seats. Okay, so, so basically, if you look in the gray box, the first constraint set there uh, is basically the slack. 
right? It's CP minus who's been assigned. Um, so it's, it, you know, if, if the project center capacity is not all the way full, that difference in the middle there is, you know, non-zero, it's some, some positive number. And we trigger a, a binary indicator variable ZP um, that turns on. And together with the next constraint set, it ensures that no, um, no matches are made. Um, let's see. Yeah, ensures no matches are made for um, uh, waste. Yeah, thanks. Okay. okay, great. So, so, so those are the stability representations um, that we cover. Next, we have. The, now I'm coming back to the WPI um, kind of specific context. Okay, our our problem we care about maximizing total student placements. That's in blue. That, that's true. Um, in the red. We also care about student satisfaction or utility. And the third purple, uh, we care about project center director satisfaction as well, but that's kind of tertiary, right? And, and these are all done in a lexicographic manner. So just again, um, we would rather um, the first, you know, so, so one incremental um, contribution to the first component in the objective is better than anything we could have for the second or third component. We choose the, the gamma one and the gamma two coefficients um, that way. And similarly for, for gamma two. Um, so, so it is really um, you know, primary, secondary, and tertiary uh, components. Um, I also mentioned that we care about cohorts. So I'm briefly gonna touch base on those because it, again, it's important at each project center to uh, have a blend of students that they prefer, right? So like, for example, there's you know, maybe roughly 24 seats at a project center, they wouldn't want to have an extreme imbalance in gender. Uh, they form smaller teams. It's just an important, you know, and, and then some locations care about maybe having more computer science majors. Um, so we allow them to set targets uh, and, and use ideas from goal programming to, to hit those targets. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll kind of skip over some of these details for the goal programming approach, but, um, you know, just walk through the math here a bit. We've got the same blue, red, and you know, purple objective components. And what we're doing here is, um, you know, maybe I'll direct your attention to the constraint at the bottom. And what we're saying here is that we've got a target on the right-hand side, TAIP for attribute A, level I, project center P. So they're looking for some, you know, maybe certain amount of Spanish speakers or certain amount of computer science majors. And I've got uh, basically over and under deviation variables on the left hand hand side of that constraint set, uh, Ys, so Y bar and Y under bar for over and under. And uh, then we just, you know, excess P, if X is, if, sorry, if S is matched to P, then we get a contribution there. So we're just trying to hit our target, you know, suppose they specify they want eight out of 24 are, you know, computer science majors, and then we're counting accordingly, right? And so, and, and then in the objective function, if I come back up there in the brown component, uh, we're just minimizing the squared penalty for both un over and under assignments um, that are deviating, you know, from the desired targets. Um, so I hope that I hope that was clear. Um, and, and again, we choose the weights W over bar and under bar in the objective function again to um, ensure that this is lexicographic. Okay, so so the, <laughs> I realized I covered maybe a couple different areas around stability, uh, justifiable envy, waste, um, cohort considerations. So. So let me kind of take a step back now and discuss what so one of the things we wanted to do was evaluate these stability representations. Uh, we want to do that over several data sets. Okay, so, so one is the actual is real empirical data from WPI. We've collected all the data uh, for three years. We actually have the fourth year, but, we're, but it's not yet in. Um, it just happened this, this current academic year. And you can see the size of the number of students, roughly around 1,000, roughly around 50 project centers. These are actually project center slash term combinations because you can go to a, you know, some project centers operate more than once a year. We've got the uh, level of uh, tiers for each. Uh, you know, so students, basically, they rank. They say, uh, I, I'm most interested in this category, and they list project centers there. I, I'm, ex these are acceptable, and these are not acceptable. So they have three tiers. Um, 
And what else do I need to mention here? Uh, we've got a time limit of uh, roughly, I think that might be a typo, that's probably a day. And these are hours. So for the, the, the other two constraint sets, the other two constraint sets are from, we take from Delorme et al, which is a, a, an outstanding paper. Um, HRT, hospital residents. Um, they have, you know, a roughly similar size, right? Of uh, almost a thousand, not quite a thousand, you know, students. Um, and, uh, and it's doctors and theirs, and uh, 50 or so hospitals and theirs. And uh, what else do I need to mention here? Oh, and, th and then, so, so a little bit later, this last, we also generate synthetic data. And we talk, we document how we do all this in our paper, uh, which is posted on optimization online. I'll, I'll give the link at the end of the talk. Um, but okay, so we've got three data sets that we're going to explore now um, some computations with. Okay, the first one is just relatively with, uh, with respect to WPI data. Um, so we've got three years of data. So we've left, center, and right, and we've got different um, tiers. Uh, so, so basically, um, well, the middle is actually great, uh, right? We placed all 927 students in their kind of top tier. Don't have to worry about stability in that case. Um, everybody's been matched to a place they most want to go, uh, they're most interested in. Uh, so on the left, you'll see that some students from that year um, were not placed in, a, in, in their top tier. Um, so they were placed in tier two. Uh, okay, but, but pretty pretty good there. The last year um, was actually, there was pretty scarce capacity and that just had to do with, we had a lot more students that year um, and some were unassigned. But unassigned again, remember that it's not like they, they don't get a chance to go. Um, they, they chose not to list many students, or excuse me, project centers in their list and they were not as competitive as other students. Um, okay, so that's locally at WP, WPI data. We were pretty pleased with these results. So, so was the sponsor here at WPI. Um, the next set of slides is around our cohort. Uh, we chose two attributes that we cared about, uh, female and um, computer science major. So female is blue, CS is um, orange. And here we're just talking about the percentage gain over not using a cohort. And by including this, the, the goal programming technique with cohort composition, um, we found, you know, roughly for, for female, uh, for the first two years, which were, had a bit more flexibility, you know, 10 to 15% gains. So, so we, so we were able to get more females where those were desired. And similarly, computer science, not as many, there's just not as many computer science students, as you can imagine. It's not, you know, roughly 50, 50, um, but there's still, there were still gains. Um, and then in the last year, you can see the gains are much smaller, but again, that's just because there was a, it was a very tight year um, with respect to capacity. Um, okay, so, so I just wanted to briefly touch on those. Okay, so, so then we also looked at um, the HRT data set. We wanted to test it against uh, another um, well done study. And so we looked at Delorme's study from 2019 and what they were doing in their paper, this is important and maybe a bit subtle, um, they were maximizing total doctor placements or total placements. And in WPI's context, we were looking for also for satisfaction, uh, a utility, right? So, so we cared about um, the hospital or project center side satisfaction, well, as well as student satisfaction. Um, it turned out that, uh, so a couple of things about the Delorme study, um, they did some really amazing things focusing on that first objective, like uh, just additional uh, extensions and, and to, to make their computational performance better. Um, but because we cared about utility, we adapted an earlier um, model in their paper. I think it was actually the first model. So it's not, we're not really comparing apples to apples. In their paper, they did some amazing things with their, you know, their first objective. We are um, comparing, we kind of forked it, right? And, and, and um, but we also um, did one more thing. Uh, we considered hospital satisfaction and not student satisfaction simply because the way that they're, that they have their downloadable code, um, the, the way their downloadable code um, looked, it was just conducive for the hospital side. That was just kind of a matter of ease for us, but um, for no other reason than that. But so, so as far as the performance went, um, we found actually that SPC1 and SPC2 both performed pretty well for their data set. Um, again, all the specifics are in the, um, in the paper that we posted on optimization online. 
this is a very, again, this is not comparing to their best model. This is comparing kind of their baseline model, but then we extended with this consideration in the objective. Okay. Finally, we generate like a, a large suite of synthetic data. Okay, uh, so we've got five different uh, parameters and uh, different levels. If we, you know, we take the, the full factorial design here, we've got 210 different runs and we did solve 10, 10 replicates or instances per run. Um, so it's 2,100 you know, runs, uh, 2,100 solves, if you will. Um, but then we removed 23 of these indeterminate uh, because they were indeterminate. There was just no clear winner for 23 out of these 210. So we've got 187 remaining. Okay, so I, rec I realize there's probably a lot of information on this slide. Um, I wanna draw your attention to the lower left where uh, we've I've kind of zoomed up on the image that's in the top left. Okay, so, so in the lower left, we've got, um, you know, basically one hour time limit on the x-axis and the number of solved instances is the y-axis. And then you, you can probably see that uh, the four algorithm or four, you know, stability representations or I might just say algorithms, uh, SPC1, 2, VVM, and then BBT. And here we're comparing BBT, which is actually quite similar to HRT1. Uh, let me go back to the, the slide here. Um, they're actually quite similar, and I, I think you can actually derive one from the other. Um, so I just want to point that out, but we're actually comparing with BBT. Um, we've done fairly well, but, it, but it's almost like, you know, this is a very close race. Um, BBT was a little, performed a little worse um, overall. And, and again, I'm just plotting instance by instance. This is, uh, um, you know, how they performed. Now, if I come back up to the top here, um, we've got, you know, basically not much happens here. And then I've got gap over here um, after 3,600 3, seconds and I've ranked them. And here you can see VVM does quite well, um, but all of these are stacking up right here close to a 0% gap because you remember like the lexicographic optimization. So we've got things that are very close to zero, but we're, there's probably some small improvements that are being made after 30, you know, when we got to 3,600 seconds, it wasn't, in other words, the gap didn't close uh, completely. And there's probably maybe some small improvements being made. Um, but on the whole are fairly close. Okay. And then some just went to infinity. I, I mean, infinity just, you know, we weren't able to um, find a feasible solution for certain ones um, within an hour. Uh, all right. I've got over here the count of uh, lowest average runtime and MIP gap across three classes and 187 runs. Um, you can see that, okay, so there's kind of three classes here. One, Remember, we solved 10, 10 replicates for each run or, or 10, 10 instances. Uh, for those that solved the optimality, SPC2 had the fastest runtime, uh, largely. For those, for, for those um, runs where some, in, some of the 10 instances solved the optimality and some timed out, uh, VVM did very well. And then for others where they all timed out, VVM was performing the best, and that's measured by gap. Right. And, and then where they, where they were split, we chose the, to focus on the runtime there, where some of them solved the optimality. Okay, so, so just the general trends are that SPC, for the table here, SPC2 seems to be performing pretty well. VVM is also pretty good for suboptimal and timeout runs. Yeah. On the left, the figures show that um, SPC2, it's, it's hard to see, but it tends to have a slightly better performance for those that can be solved the optimality. But for suboptimal instances, VVM seems to be um, find feasible, strong feasible solutions most often. And SPC2 actually found it the least often. Um, you can see that here in the orange. Okay. Um, so just in summary here, uh, this is all about our, our synthetic SPC data set. What we found was that SPC2, and this is largely related to, I'm gonna go back a slide, SPC2's performance here on instances that solve to optimality uh, really did well. And I should say this is SPC2 with the no waste system. All of these are with no waste system, okay? Um, except BBT, BBT doesn't need it. As I mentioned, it covers no waste. Um, okay, so, so SPC2 where, uh, what we're saying here is that uh, the number of students is no larger than the number of the, the total capacity. Okay, so, so for those type, whether, whether for those types of uh, matching problems where there's sufficient capacity, SBC2 seems to be doing very well. Um, 
for others, it's a little more nuanced and where uh, there, there's not so many um, ranking levels on the project center side. That's really the only difference between the middle two here. SBC one seems to be doing a little bit better when there's more ranking levels on the project center side, DBT um, seems to do better. And then for, th for those, oh, and I should also mention that, you know, students are a little bit larger than, than so there's more, a little, there, how should I say, a few more students than there are, if you will, um, total, total slots. Yeah. And then the, the last constraints at VVM is when, when there's actually could be quite a few more um, students than there are, up to 50% more students than total capacity. Um, VVM does well, and, and especially for smaller capacities. Um, okay, so, th so that's a summary of our, of our uh, study. And I just wanted to cover the takeaways here. Um, so we do optimization for, for many to one matching, right? We maximize efficiency, ensure stability and accommodate side constraints and incomplete lists with ties. We developed several new stability representations and um, oh, this should say one for, one for waste and show their correctness and design algorithms to accelerate construction of uh, new stability constraints. We also incorporated cohorts or teams via goal programming and uh, we did a fairly extensive uh, computational study with that. Uh, our study revealed that, uh, that where there are in, in settings where there's sufficient seats for students and, and like across other parameters, um, SBC2 seems to be doing pretty well. Um, and this covers, you know, say school choice. There needs to be a seat for every every child in in the community, right? And hospital residency matching also applies there. And we've been doing this at WPI since 2017. So, and, and I would just say, kind of practically speaking, we say. I'm being conservative, but many hundreds of hours, you know, collectively ac across the staff, students, and project center directors. And I think I'd like to hope anyway that, that we're improving long-term student and alumni satisfaction by getting more students to where they want to go um, with respect to our Hallmark um, WPI plan. Okay, so, so that concludes my, my presentation. I want to thank everyone and I'm glad to take questions and comments. Here's the link. Um, you can probably Google it as well, um, but optimization online, it was just posted last month in February. Thank you very much uh, for, the, for the great talk. So, and, and sorry, we, we've kind of run over the hour. We had some technical uh, issues at the, at the beginning. So now uh, Alex is gonna match us, uh, hopefully in a stable way, uh, or actually yes, you're gonna let us pick, right? And I just wanna say that we do have another uh, uh, discrete optimization talks session in a month on April, 20 something and <laughs> i don't remember off the top of my head um it's the final one of the semester uh, but we are planning for further sessions later on so if you're interested in giving a talk please sign up on our website there's a link to give uh, a proposed uh, dot and we would be glad to um, try to schedule you in for either the fall or the summer we haven't decided yet what the schedules will be like so uh, thank you all very much for attending or for those who are listening offline um, and uh, yes, stick around for the breakout rooms.